I'm just really excited to do this today's webinar. It's gonna be a fun 45 minutes and I hope you all enjoy it here. My name is Kempton Izuno. I'm the partner manager here at Zeppelin based in San Francisco. I work with our top consulting and app design and dev partners who make apps for their clients. Partners like VML YNR have, have different needs than just a customer who's building apps for internal use only. So we'll cover how Zeppelin makes for a more efficient developer, but kind of through the lens of an app build business. So I'll have it over to Adam Jones, a group director, mobile apps at VMLYNR. And Adam, you can give a quick background on yourself. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, so yeah, I, I've been here at VMLYNR for, uh, it'll be nine years actually in, in June. Um, oh boy. And uh, yeah, um, uh, and it's turned into a, a fabulous experience. experience. And, and like you mentioned, it's a, it's a digital agency. So we we do have both sides of the house. We, we have your traditional agency um, world. So if you've seen Wendy's commercials or the, the Wendy's roast that's happening right now on Twitter, that's VMLYNR. Um, and then if you use apps like United Rentals, um, Sherwin-Williams, th those are apps that we build as well or help our partners build. Um, but it, it's a fun job. It's a cool title, but funner job. And since I get to live in a little bit of a gray area between the two departments that are the technology department and the creative department. Mm -hmm. um, and so my day to day is, is very much kind of going between those two departments and working with our clients as well, just helping them understand feasibility and, and, and how we're going to help them build what we're going to build. So um, and then today, what we'll be looking at is actually just uh, some of the positioning that we did early on as we brought when I joined and we brought Zeppelin on board. Um, and then same talking points that we use today as we onboard new partners, whether that's in-house, we're doing development in-house, or if we're using a development partner, kind of helping them understand our, what our typical process looks like. Well, that's an interesting position. So you're not, you, you have actually all this basically high, higher level view because you have to, because you're talking to design and dev and the client and other organizations, you know, uh, outside and inside the company. So, okay, cool. That's, yeah. that's all right. So uh, let's get going. We'll start off with some slides here. There will be some live later. So this is not all slide where <laughs> I get that. Cool. Let me, I'm just going to take and throw a browser up so I can see a little bit and hit play. Um, so, yeah. So what, like I mentioned, uh, the, this keynote that we'll be looking through um, it is a recent iteration that I have done as we had onboarded some new projects, um, but it's been lovely Zeppelified. Um, so it has the cute little illustrations um, and, and all that, which I will continue to use. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Awesome. Um, so we, we kind of hit it on it at the beginning, and, and this is something that we... Um, we kind of preach not only internally, but with our partners as well. Um, you know, we, we are a, a creative agency. We're a digital agency. And, and so there's some really smart um, and, and brilliant experienced folks on this side. And so we can design some wonderful ideas and, and move some pixels around and, and really kind of wow folks. And um, but we never we never want to get outside of that realm of reality and the fact that we we have to execute it. Right. There's there's a team that's sole dedication is building that experience. Um, and so we always kind of start with that of just, it's, I almost say it's easy, but it is easy to make a, a, a tappable prototype and, and do all the. I did I just get word. We have, we have word Adam, uh, his, his browser unfortunately crashed. I think the, it was just too excited for what he was about to tell us all. <laughs> Here he is. He's back again. The, 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 uh, best part of that is I started getting texts and teams and Slack messages from everybody around here trying to let me know that that had happened. So <laughs> I was very aware. <laughs> so, okay. Where did you drop me? Let's start there. Uh, just at the, when we were talking about, you know, the getting the visions executed. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Um, and to me, the, this is very true. This is, you know, I, I've been in Silicon Valley my whole life. And so you can have all these ideas, but then they're worthless pretty much until they're brought to reality. Yes, so, it, 100%. Um, so how, how do you go about that? Yeah. And so let me 
I, I will attempt to put this back in full screen mode. If we have that problem again, well, actually, does it look okay? Is everybody cool if we just yeah, do this? Right there. Just okay. go with that. We'll, we'll try this. Um, so uh, it kind of probably as I dropped off and was talking to myself for 10 seconds, um, it, is we really kind of start kind of preaching into the, the product teams, whether that be the customer experience, the strategy, is moving out of that as quickly as we can out of the, the prototypes um, that can kind of be made in isolation to prototyping it in the platform that our desired outcome is. Um, and, and so a lot of the times we'll, we'll start playing with that pretty early. And there are some you know, new up and coming tools that I'm very interested in with like Juno and Play. Um, that's kind of that low code, no code um, that really kind of leans into using native components uh, to prototype things out. Um, but the more, the faster that we can get to that point, the better for everybody. Yeah. And a lot of times to me, I would imagine that's because you want to get the feedback from the client. You know, like, is, is this what you had envisioned? Because of course we can all talk about it, but until you actually taste, taste the dish as it were, then yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, and so kind of a little backstory. I mean, uh, so when I joined uh, VMO almost, like I said, almost nine years ago, um, I, I was brought on and at, at that time, so as 2014 ish, um, where I was coming from, we had, we had made the move to sketch, um, and it started, uh, using Zeppelin as well. Um, but when I got here, um, we were, there was still some practice being formed around hygiene and, and how we hand those things, um, from creative to, to technology. And so there was still that Photoshop uh, handoff happening and, and developers in Photoshop and, and cutting layers. Um, and so early on, um, we kind of started refining that a bit. And the whole idea of that was, and I think it's, it's actually more important now um, than it was then, um, mainly because the tools have gotten, the design tools have gotten so good and, and the table stakes in terms of how collaborative they are and how kind of, uh, work in progress in real time they are in terms of what's happening, um, that all of those kind of bells and whistles add a lot of noise for the developers. Um, you know, that getting access, regardless if you're naming your layers or not, um, sometimes it's just overkill. Um, and there's a lot of hunting and pecking that will, that happens throughout those as the developers look. And quite frankly, we're just asking the developers as, as new design tools come along to keep up with not only their own world, um, but understanding what's happening in, in the design world when it comes to tools as well. Right. So preserving clarity to me, a lot of this is just the intent, as we know, we all get into our own niches of, of our jobs and roles and, and, but to be able to make that clear to somebody else as you know, to me that a lot of that's, you know, communication, it just in our day-to-day -day lives, even outside of work, but it, to me, so maybe just elaborate a little bit if how that is a bit different, I can imagine, you know, for a client versus an external client versus an internal client, how, how do you see that as being different? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, there's a, a couple, couple points there that tends, I'm, I'm going to actually sneak over to the next slide. Cause I think it will, it will kind of help with that point is um, it, it's kind of, it will vary for us from, from partner to partner um, what our interaction is going to be. Um, you know, we, we may have a situation where we're completely in charge of the experience and the design aspect, but the development isn't happening in house for us. Um, it's happening with another development partner that a client has selected. Um, and so there's, there's, everybody has an opinion and, and tools that they use in their daily process. Um, and we can't go into that relationship completely steadfast that we're not going to change anything or any way that we do things. Sure. Yeah, um, yeah we, we've got to be flexible. And, and because of that, you know, I think one benefit that the design teams here at VML YNR have is while like most Figma is the, the majority of the tool that teams use, um, there's freedom from team to team and office to office on what they use. And so there are our teams that use XD and, and sketch can still. And, um, and so that, that flexibility, I, I think means a, not only a lot for, for our employees, but it allows us as we go into partners, 
Um, and we're, we're trying to figure out how we're going to work with them that we're equipped and, and we're just not kind of being sticks in the mud when it, when we kind of get into those kickoff calls. Sure. And, and I could see that too, with different people very far up on the Figma curve or they're just starting or, or whatnot to be able to try to, you know, work with all of those groups there. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, oh, go ahead. go ahead. I was going to say, you, you mentioned that uh, you oftentimes don't do the development or you have other, I guess, maybe the client picks different, you know, pe groups to, mm -hmm. to do development or designer work. Can you, can you talk about that and maybe give an example? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it typically will depend, um, just depends on, on the client um, and what their objective is. And um, so they, sometimes they like that diversity, right? Um, have a little bit of different ownership of, of different parts of the experience. And, and sometimes that may mean, um, that we are co-developing um, with the partner. So I'm sure when Williams is a good example, they, they have their own set of developers. We have our developers that sit here in Kansas City and Poland um, that work on that as well. Um, and so a lot of the times it's just kind of the, the RFP, the relationship part of that kind of dictates a little bit of, of how we interact there. Um, and so there, there's always kind of that, um, I was just sharing with, uh, we had a, a client visit recently, um, and it's one where it is a, another cl client partner doing the development. And there is a little bit of unknown and risk, right? When, when you're doing that, um, cause you hope, um, everybody's going to kind of work well together and, and everybody's going to be kind of rowing in the right direction. Um, and I, I was sharing with them that like the, the last few weeks of we as we've really started picking up steam um it's it's been extremely lovely just because we, we wake up in the mornings um there are a few hour time difference um and we'll see in slack um the de individual developers working the task um messaging myself and some of the design team with a little video or a screenshot of a work in progress that they're they're developing and asking questions about does this look good is this what you expected and so like having that relationship um is just foundational and making sure we build out that experience to what our expectation and the team's expectation is um but there is that little bit of unknown because you, you don't have complete control uh over the entirety of the experience like you may if sure. you you're building your own product sure okay yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah um, and so, you know, we, we use this slide really, um, cause if at the time it was eight years, so almost nine years now, like if we were just to kind of walk through the different silos of the design tools, um, that have come along in that time, um, whether it be, a, a auxiliary design tool, like abstract, um, we, we would have been asking our developers at every point along the way here of like, Hey, new cool tool. Um, I need you to learn how to pull assets out of this tool. Um, and so we've saved our, I think we've, we've saved ourselves a lot of headache over the last eight years in the sense of, um, and, and we have, we've kicked, we have kicked the tires occasionally on tools um, to, sure. to see how that would work. Um, but it, it definitely has been kind of that nice underpinning that it just makes it a nice ex expectation from a development standpoint of what we're getting and knowing that we can get, over our specs um, to the developers, whether there are developers or not. Sure, I mean, it's, to me, it's a process independent layer and that way you can preserve preserve the workflow independent of the technologies. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Cool. Yeah. Um, and so uh, th this is a slide that I think Typically, developers, especially some of the, the older developers that have been around since I got here as well, um, or started about the same time as I did, um, is like, th this wasn't fun, right? Like, the, the, the throw the, the PSD over the wall, um, maybe if you were lucky enough, you used a tool like Slicey or Layer Cake, I think it had two different names, um, and you'd have to, like, uh, add naming conventions and then drag your PSD in and it would spit your, your assets out. And then you drag those over to Xcode. Um, and it, the biggest pain there was we were asking developers to dig through layers and figure out how best to export assets. And as I kind of started digging through like what we were putting into projects, it was like they were being efficient 
Um, but it wasn't probably the best way to export those assets out. Um, and yes, that was almost nine years ago, but we, we still run into situations um, where we may be taking work over or, or be uh, helping come in and, and help smooth out a transition um, where there is kind of more of that very waterfall approach of um, we're just going to, you know, we'll take the assets, we'll zip them up, we'll put them in confluence. Um, and then hopefully it's what the developers need. Um, and then the developers don't have to just go poking around layers. Um, I, I, I've never quite understood that attraction, um, to, to the developers trying to figure out what layers they need to go pick through. And so, um, always, always a, a slide. I think that the developers kind of tend to gravitate to because for those that had to deal with the Photoshop and, and digging through layers, um, it was never fun. Well, I, and I can imagine, I mean, like, like a lot of things in life, right. Our, our painful experiences point us into ways that we shouldn't do things <laughs> yeah. and there yeah. must be a, a better way to do it. I mean, I'm always reminded of that old quip, you know, <laughs> it, what is experience? Experience is what you get when you don't get what you want type of thing. So, yeah. so to me that that's, but that's, what's neat about things. I mean, VML has won lots of awards. You guys have a really sticky and large client base, the multi-year contracts kind of thing. I mean, to me, that's neat. So, you know, let's, let's, I want to learn more about, you know, your process, you know, let's, let's dive into that and how Zeppelin helps in that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So before we do, well, I'll, I'll go do this. I'm gonna actually, I'll jump out to our Zeppelin instance and I'm just going to kind of poke and, and show a couple things. Um, sure. yeah, and, that, cool. and we'll hit on those as we go through this. And I, I may just wait until we get to one of those things. And so what we do is we kind of take a look at it and, and say, Hey, um, like I said, the, the, there is a point, I think that what Figma and Miro have done to kind of redefine table stakes um, for a design tool um, can't be denied. Um, and, and I think that the awesome part of it is they really kind of created this kind of work in progress environment. Um, but that is problematic um, on the build it side um, because there, we, do need a, we do need a snapshot in time to be able to uh, articulate what the developers need to build and what's going to be passed through QA. Um, and so it, as we kind of look through the, these complexities that, that we say as Zeppelin solves throughout it, um, we kind of use these as the talking points and, and oftentimes we will, we'll jump in. And when I jump in here in a minute, um, you'll see, um, some of the clients like Sherwin, United Rentals and, and Wendy's, as we have built out those, uh, instances, um, of how we're using it when, if I were to jump in and I'll, Likely today, I'll use Sherwin Williams as an example. Um, but if if I were to jump into Wendy's or United Rentals um, or any of our other instances, um, you aren't going to see a cookie cutter pattern on how every implementation goes um, because it comes back to that reality that um, I am not on every project, nor is our the same design team on every project, and we want the design or we want the teams themselves. Um, to be able to build out their best hygiene that's most efficient for them. Um, so we have some guardrails, but we don't dictate every nook and cranny of that experience. And, and to me, that also allows innovation too, you know, incremental innovation. So, you know, other teams might have discovered a new method or approach or something, and that'd be better for, for everyone. Yeah. Um, so we, we hit on this up front. But it, it is, you know, we, we will refer to it as the peacemaker. One, one thing I did early on um, as we were, we were getting um, Zeppelin through our IT process is I really started phrasing Zeppelin as a development tool. And I, I just kind of avoided calling it a design tool um, because we're an agency and there's a lot of design tools at our disposal. And so there's a lot of like, well, why, why this versus this? Um, but because we had kind of carved out that, that need on the development side, um, and, and could prove out that efficiency and, and prove out that, that ability to kind of recover and save some of that relationship between the design and developers, um, we really started positioning it as a developer tool. Um, and so one of the things that we do, and let me switch here on my, my screen sharing. 
um, is we will uh, actually a lot of the times have the developers. Um, sorry about that. Let me switch it over. I don't have my glasses on, so you're going to see me squinting. <laughs> Let me make sure it's open. There we go. Um, we we actually have we'll have the designers a lot of the times just push the designs um, to Zeppelin, and then have someone um, like myself um, go through there and help catalog and organize um, the screens. And so um, our our project managers as well. Um, what we, we kind of get them started with flows. Um, but then overnight, um, I shared this last story, I think with June, the last time of like, you know, show, showed our, uh, our United rentals PM, how flows worked on a Friday. And, and by Monday she was going away with it. Um, on, on Sherwin, Emily was the same way, showed her that she kind of pulled out the, the entire, uh, registration flow. Um, so see my screen a okay, right? Cool. So um, let me jump into the pro app here. Um, and so we use uh, different levels of integrations. Um, so uh, if I were to peek into Wendy's, um, you'll see that we're like leaning really heavily into the Jira integrations there. Um, it's a, a newer project. We're just starting. We've learned some things as, we, as we've started going through this. Um, Sherwin has started adopting it as well. Um, so you'll see it at the screen level and not necessarily at the section level. Um, and so uh, we, we kind of learn through there. And it, it also comes back to the fact that a lot of the times we won't own the JIRA instance that we're working in, right? Um, so we, we kind of have to have that introduction to our partner ITs as well and saying, hey, we need, we're going to request this plugin. Can you accept it? And um, we get it in play there. Um, and so as we do it, we kind of just set them up and, and the teams manage. And um, up until this morning, um, I, you know, I hadn't logged in and, and checked out the what was going on on the Sherwin side um, until, I don't know, it's probably been a couple of months, a few months. And so, you know, at this point, it's uh, Stefan's doing a great job, well-oiled machine. They've got their process figured out and we just let it run. Which um, is fabulous. I mean, that's to me, that's that's great to be able to have a, a a framework to be able to do that because obviously, you know, we are just each of us as individuals. If you can leverage a some kind of, you know, guard, as you say, um, guardrail process, I mean, that's how you scale. Yeah. Um, so we jump back here. Um, so we kind of talk, talked about this with the the in progress versus um, that snapshot in time, um, and, and so we we love develop or the designers love you know there's a lot of exploration and research and iterations that happen um, one of my favorite things that our design teams do is um, we have a weekly product owner meeting with our different product owners across clients um, and it's really just to kind of walk them through work in progress and it's not a formal meeting um, it, it is literally having the canvases up of figma walking them through things um, as the product owner reacts um, they will move and change pixels around saying like this, do you mean like that? Um, so, which is a hundred percent what it's intended for. Um, so we, we use that, but that can also be very, very confusing for the developers to figure out where that target is. Um, in fact, this, this week, I think it was Monday, uh, I had got into the office and I had opened up Figma and I was checking out something we were doing on Wendy's and I noticed one of the Wendy's, uh, partner developers, uh, their name on a cursor moving around Figma. And I was like, uh oh, <laughs> what's that about? Um, and so I just slacked him and, and asked. And I was like, do, do you not have access? And um, we had given him access, but we didn't ha hadn't given him granted the developer role. Um, and oh, so I was like, well, oh, sit tight one second. And so we fixed that. Um, and, and then he was able to get to his assets and stuff because he was doing that. And he was, you know, going around the Figma trying to figure out what screen he should look at trying to find the layer to export the asset he needed and um and so it just helped with that connection because now he can just hit his ticket or from the ticket hit the zeppelin link and, and get into the, the task at hand sometimes we use the analog here at zeppelin kind of like you know there's the art studio 
which you usually wouldn't want to bring a client into, you know, and then there's yeah. a gallery where we show all, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, all the, the released paintings, you know, and from what you're just story, I hadn't heard that one before. I can just imagine there's a single person wandering around unescorted <laughs> in the art studio after hours. And you're thinking, Oh, don't, don't tip over a painting or don't, don't stick your finger into the paint. Yeah. Yeah. And it, cause, um, and it kind of segues nicely into these variations, right? It's like, um, there, there is kind of a necessity, right. With, with Figma that, there'll be the variations kind of stacked up and there may be a nice naming convention that happens with them. Um, but there is a little bit of, okay, what's different um, and what do I need to be worried about here? Um, and so that's one advantage we've had with the variations um, as the designers will, will get that okay from the PO. Um, and we feel like, you know, it's at that 80, 90%. We'll push it to Zap one. And as they come in, um, myself and some of some of the members on our team um, we'll have a little slack channel hooked up and, and we'll see new screens are pushed in and we'll go in and and kind of organize them we'll put them in the sections we'll drop them into flows if we need to um, and then we'll, we'll smash together the variations as well um, so that way um, it becomes very beneficial for the developers if i jump back over here um, you know if i think this one has a lot of different ones because it's a form um, but it allows them really quickly to be able to see the different variations they may be introduced. Um, and so while it's great, I think like this part is, is great because it gets context of different layout implications that may be coming. Sure. But I think the, the thing that usually gets them really excited, and I was just doing like a little bit of a refresher 101 uh, with uh, our Wendy's partner, Navalia, and um, I was showing them of what will be coming with the design system. And I showed them this part of being able to go, hey, this form field is used in 100 screens across two projects. And when I click that, I can see all those variations across that and see the breadth of that. Um, that was the part they were like, holy crap. Like that, that to them became really impactful really quickly um, because it just allows from a planning, from a component building standpoint, to be able to plan for what is coming um, and just not worry about what's in front of them at that moment. Exactly. To me, that that this particular example, it's almost like, you know, as a developer, you're going, well, are we talking two screens or are we talking 20 screens? Because obviously that's a big difference in how much time I need to budget or my team needs to budget. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, that's yeah. Um, and then we've kind, of, we've kind of hit it on it here with uh, flows. Um, so flows is something that we're, we're, implementing in a, a lot of different locations. Um, and I, I used to actually use a, a standalone tool for this um, that was just built completely for flows and loved it. it. It did its job. And that was actually one of the very first things I would do for every project is I would go in um, and immediately start mapping out the current state of the app, grab all the screenshots, map all the flows. Mm -hmm. um, and so once this became part of the, the work set, um, it allowed us to kind of just move straight into that. Um, and, and so that, again, you know, if we, if we go back here and we look at um, Sherwin-Williams, they, they have uh, the way that they have this flow is um, it's in app registration and uh, there's a whole flow for uh, setting up a business. So it, it gets a little gnarly in some spots, but um, being able to have that all here and self-contained for the, the developers to just jump straight down into, um, it, it just took out a step and it didn't require Adam to become a bottleneck um, when I was managing that, that other tool. Um, again, I didn't, I didn't really want the designers to have another tool that they needed to worry about. That is really kind of more of a... Um, try to keep the house tidy, make sure the PO could follow the flow um, that we were doing to, to satisfy our side of the house. Um, and so th this has made it really nice. Uh, honestly, like there's a lot of great things that were announced at Harmony, but like I, I, I was sharing with the team that like the placeholder boards within mm -hmm. Flow, um, like really kind of a, oh, duh, that makes a lot of sense. Like it just is nice because now the PMs can go in there know that the design team's working, maybe they see some early iterations, and then they're able to go in there and kind of start putting some of those placeholders in there and have that conversation with the development team, the POs, QA, 
Um, and then as the boards come in, we replace them and, and go. And so I'm, I'm really excited on, on the Wendy's project to start really leveraging the placeholders um, quite a bit because uh, we'll, we'll be starting to introduce some of that, those little changes and just won't have the designs yet. Yeah. To me, that, that my wording for that is like, you can put your intent down, but you don't have to have all the artwork kind of like, you know, you know, soon to fill, soon to come, you just stick it right there. That, that, that is yeah. so neat. You would, you'd share with me a while back. Um, what was it? Um, you said that uh, flows and maybe some other functions in Zeppelin had uh, saved relationships. <laughs> yeah. Saved? Can you, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, it actually was something that came out of a conversation I was having with June where, um, and I, I get, like, I do understand and get the, the ask of trying to figure out, like, adding a number or a dollar value to the time savings, right? Um, and I think that it's it's kind of like when you're doing your metrics for your Kanban board and stuff, you can like really kind of pull out some, some numbers and stuff and, and be able to kind of estimate. Um, and so the question was like, hey, you know, how much time has this saved? And I, I'm sure it saved uh, a tremendous back and forth amount of time. But I was like, I'm, I don't know what is a good or high or low number. And, and my initial reaction to that was like, it, it's more about relationships saved um, because it just it becomes more collaborative. And I think I feel like the developers don't feel like they're doing more than they're being tasked with. And same with the designers. Um, and so it's a nice kind of neutral ground. Um, and some of that, some of that may be just our approach um, of us, our team acting and the PM acting as a little bit of a middleman there um, and helping manage and, and kind of size and, and section things off within Zeppelin. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, you know, I, I think it's what builds those relationships where we do have those developers reaching out via Slack and saying, hey, this is what's there. This is what I have so far. Um, and we can have those honest conversations of, hey, your design has, you know, this this green bar on a, a field validation um, behind the border of the text field. Like, I can do that a few more hours of development or I have it this way. How does this look? And we can negotiate that and have that dialogue. Um, and so I think that that is where it's not only saved, but just, I think, helped enrich those relationships and allowed some flexibility. Yeah. I mean, to me, to be able to have the trust in a way of, of this extended teams and even your own team, because you can, you know, have this means to, to iterate, to get to, you know, a commonly agreed solution, whatever it is for a single screen or the entire app, that's, you can't really measure that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and speaking of measure um, on specs, um, the, you know, that's, I admittedly, I, I've been kind of uh, siloed off into uh, app and kind of emerging tech stuff for the last decade plus. Um, and, and so I know there, there is some flexibility when it comes to some of the other design tools with web, um, but app development, and especially when you're looking at iOS and Android and, and asset needs and, and specs, um, gets a little nuanced. Um, and so that's where we kind of come into a lot of the play when we're kind of separating this out. Um, there's a like, there is that question of like, wait a minute, I've got to separate my Android screens, my iOS and my web. And it's like, yes, because it's being developed differently. Um, and so that dedication to the platform that those integrations, I, which um, we talked about this, I thought it was the next slide. Um, those integrations where the, the developers are able to kind of export straight out of, of Zeppelin assets and styles into their asset catalogs. Um, it's just, it's just, again, it's just saving a, a step, right? It's just one less thing on the to-do list um, as they're completing stories. Yeah. Reducing friction. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a huge benefit there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, I kind of gave you the sneak peek of this, right. Of when <laughs> uh, we were in there and, and Sherwin, like, to me, like this is one of the that has been one of the biggest selling points lately when it comes. I mean, you get to the development bit and you're kind of walking new developers that are using the tool for the first time. Um, I think they see the benefit and, and they get excited about those integrations. But I think it's when they start seeing this used in, right? Like the ability to kind of see the breadth uh, of the component and how it's going to be used across the experience. Um, 
because they just, you know, they, they don't want to write the same button 10 times, right? Like they, they want to be efficient in, in, in their development and in their code. Um, so being able to see that just helps their, uh, their speed. Yeah, to have to have a library of components to be able to reuse or to be able to check to take it and use that as this is pretty good. I'm going to modify it slightly type of thing. To me, it's yeah. that's a lot of what we see as Zeppelin is, is reduce the load for the developers, which is what we're doing both with the component, the global style guides, as well as omelet. I mean, to be able to have this feedback, to be able to get more leverage for the developer, because like you say, somehow the design moniker got stuck with zeppelin early on and i get that because the designers were the ones you know sending yeah. stuff out of it but yes so much great for the developers yeah um just real quick adam just on this it seems to me you're in an interesting position you mentioned this earlier because you're having to be between several different camps and have you have you always been so hands-on i mean to me i think more people should be like that to be able to help you know, air traffic control this? Is this, have you seen that in other organizations or are you kind of unique in that, you think? I don't, I, I'm gonna be honest. I, I don't know uh, if it is uh, a unique situation. I think we've just done it here um, just to try to help um, expedite the process and kind of, uh, kind of just help the teams focus on their task at hand. Mm -hmm. um, I, I never want the, the tools, you know, like everybody says, like they don't want the tools to drive the process. I don't want tools to dictate um, or, or diminish their, their role in the experience. And so we've always kind of taken that. And so, um, you know, it may be some folks on our, our team um, specifically, or it may be some of kind of our, our partners in crime from a PM and delivery standpoint that we teach some of this stuff too, and they get in there and kind of help. Um, but I, I always have, we've always kind of, especially over the last nine years, like I've really taken the thing of like, let the designers be designers and the de developers be developers. And then if there's a squishy middle, um, try to alleviate some of that, some of that, um, on our side, um, sure. kind of how we've approached it. No, that, that, that makes a lot of sense here. Yeah. I, I'm just looking at the, 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 um, slide. Uh, we hadn't mentioned diff are you using, um, diff very much. I mean, because to me, a lot of people are mentioning that that's that's a that's a game changer for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, I, you know, I I think it's used, um, but it's not. Um, since we typically will we use that Jira connection and we look at versions uh, and we we connect those to versions, um, we I, I don't think we fear too much um, about that. But if a developer needed to do that, they know it's there. Um, the pop out is another thing that I was just recently sharing with the, the Wendy's partner, um, to be able to pop those things out and to kind of get an sure. idea of where things are. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Cause a diff for those of you who don't know that is you can compare this to screens and it'll show you, you know, the differences between that immediately. It's just so it, to me, you're right. It's almost a check. It's you, one could use it as a process, but if you already have a good process, it's almost just like this check in case you need it. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, you know, the, the, the control that the developers have, you know, we were talking about, uh, we were joking about that naming layers, the who's for it and against it, like, which is great name the layers. Uh, but when it comes to exporting those assets out, it's likely the development team or the design team may not have followed the naming convention, or there may be some modifications that may want to be made on the development side. And so just those little things like being able to change those without hunting through layers, sure. being able to, to decide whether or not, you know, if you're doing a vector PDF for, for iOS, or you need an SVG for Android for your vector drawable, like having those, those things there and quickly and be able to sync to your, to your ID becomes pretty important for them. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, and that that was kind of like that that syncing. I mean, I think that that the two things that I tend to get, um, and it's kind of fresh in mind because um, we recently kind of did that one hundred and one with the the development partner. Um, the the sync and the component bit are the two things that kind of light up their eyes, or you get like the little reactions in in Slack and Teams um when they start to see those things um because like i said it's all about being efficient and those are just little things that add up um yeah. and so being able to, to have that support and i think it makes it feel like the tool is built for them like it, it it's acknowledging that there's an end result for the designs um that's appreciated 
Oh, absolutely. To me, if it feels like it's actually helping, you know, especially you have to go over the learning curve. That's, that's huge. Yeah. That's great. And so I think that finishes up, but yeah, that, that, those are the slides that we typically, when we do a project kickoff and we're just sharing our process. And, and like I said, we all, we, we tend to, we'll give and take and mold as we need to. Um, but those are typically the things that the exercise that we go through um, to describe how we're going to work with them and why for us um, Zeppelin has kind of been that, that happy medium, that peacemaker for us over the last nine years um, as the design tools have changed out. Yeah. It, and it seems to me, I mean, just again, back to you, the, the wins and the awards and the, the satisfied clients, a lot of times it does come down to the process. And to me, it's to make the food analogy, if you show the people I'm using these great ingredients and this is my stove and oven and this is how it works and this is this is the end result. And yeah. people like to see behind this, this, the, this the um, scenes, you know, how, oh, OK, oh, OK, wow, you've really thought about this. <laughs> That's it's not just somebody saying, okay, what are we going to do today? I don't know what yeah. we're going to do. But I think <laughs> that is just, just awesome. And if, if more, if there was more focus on the process, I mean, obviously Zeppelin, we have our functions and all, but to be able to, you know, use that in a most efficient and effective way, that's, that's huge. So we, we're up, almost up against time here. I, yeah. I really appreciate everyone staying on here. We can take uh, a couple questions here. Um, yeah. oh, look, we already have one there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we do. Um, it, it is definitely more obviously a, a website of the house tool, um, but it is a tool that uh, our, our teams here, um, like United Rentals and, and Wendy's, um, have used. Um, and, and so that they use those integrations as they need. Um, but it's something that we don't necessarily have uh, a one to one on the native side of the house. It's kind of like the omelet thing, like I, I'm licking my lips on that, like, but I'm super excited, hopefully, when it get, gets over to the, the app side of the world, um, because then I can figure out a way to wiggle that in. Yeah, sorry, just uh, for those of you who are on audio only, the question was, do you use Storybook in your workflow? Oh, okay. So next question, have you come across any issues with Zeppelin where it's more of a dev read-only resource when designs are always in a state of work in progress? And are constantly changing until the last second. I was just wondering how other teams work through this. Yeah, um, so it is. Uh, that, that's actually usually our pitch to why we need to stop using um, that design tool as a snap or as the source of truth, um, because we had a handful of years ago, but we had situations where um, a development team would go through sizing and and uh, preparation for those. Um, and then start to work that story in the next day or two and click that tools link. Um, and it was, it had been iterated three or four versions and the complexity had changed. Um, and so we typically, what we like to do and what we preach with our product owners is when they feel that, that 80% of the task, like there, there's 10 to 20% left when they feel comfortable, then we start pushing it to Zeppelin. So then the developer developers can start seeing what's coming and give feedback um, as well. Um, but that's where we kind of push that iterative thing. Like we know it's not going to be perfect, but we do have to have that snapshot in time to build something. And so by using a versioned thing that exists in Zeppelin, everybody's agreeing to that's what we're building today. Um, and you, you can keep iterating on that tomorrow. That's great. But for this snapshot, this is what we're building. Um, but that, that comes with hygiene and practice, right? Like it, you kind of have to be pretty steadfast on on that and, and just kind of have the team agree that you know if it's not in the story when we go through it and it's not in in the link that's in jira it's not part of the acceptance criteria yeah i mean to me that just these other phrases come to mind like basically discipline is more important than conviction a lot of times mm. yeah cool uh, maybe one more question. We're a little bit past time, but I appreciate all the people staying on. Just, yeah. can, you elaborate, can you elaborate on the no code tools you mentioned? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's there's two that I've played around with and, and admittedly, I haven't spent a lot of time with them, but I'm, I find them very intriguing. Um, is There's one called Judo um, and they have a Mac app. Um, and uh, it, it's very much like... Uh, 
you, you take your iOS component tree or your material design component tree that they have in a library and um, you're able to bring that in. You're, be able, you're able to animate it, um, do move, natural movements that happen in the platform, right? That's important. Um, and there's another one called Play, um, which makes it really hard to find. But I think it, it, the URL is createwithplay.com, I think. Um, but same thing, they have a Mac app um, um, and an iPad app as well. Um, and you're able to connect data sources to things. Um, you're actually able to give it JSON and API calls and it can bring in things and build out lists. Um, and you can style things and, and do things. But I, I love it um, because it kind of keeps the realm of reality around things, um, which I appreciate. Um, not that you shouldn't break that at times, but um, they're, they're just, they're two cool, two, two cool tools that I, um, I'm excited to kind of see where they, they go in the space. Great. We'll have to wrap it here, but thank you so much, Adam. This, I just learned several things that, that and we've been talking for a while. If you need uh, help or someone to build your apps, contact Adam. And if you need to become, or you're interested in become a partner with Zeppelin, uh, you can contact me. And I think that uh, just about covers it. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, great. Well, appreciate everyone uh, for being on board. Thank you so much. And the recording will be available later. And we'll, we, we'll be shipping it out to you probably in the next day or two. Uh, and thank you all for coming. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye.